What is going on guys? So today I want to do something a little bit different just because I thought that this would be a lot of fun. I obviously am on YouTube and I'm also on TikTok and one of the things on TikTok that really kind of brings me a lot of views that people really enjoy is when I recommend films on streaming services and I feel like we live in a society today that is oversaturated with streaming services. It's like damn near impossible to have every single streaming service and not be in an immense amount of debt. And so many people are trying to choose and decide what streaming services are best for them. And so I thought today what would be fun is I'm not gonna go through every single one, but I thought I would go through some of the major streaming services that exist out there today, talk about some of my favorites, talk about the issues that I have with some of them, and just kind of give you a little bit of insight into what I think is worth your money and what I think isn't worth your money because I just find it really fascinating and a lot of people have a difficulty choosing those and so we'll get into it today. So first up we'll talk about the big one. We'll talk about the one that kind of started this whole thing off, Netflix. So I have quite a few problems with Netflix. I feel like over the years the quality of Netflix has deteriorated. There's, uh, there's times where there's certain months that they'll release a lot of really quality films, but I feel like for the most part, the consistency, especially as far as genres go, they don't do the greatest job of culminating a great catalog. And I feel like original programming wise, they're sort of hit or miss. I feel like some of their greatest shows have been canceled because for some reason they decide just not to put money in stuff anymore even when something performs really well and there are things that i really love obviously i'm a huge mike flanagan fan so having all of his stuff on there before but now he's moving to prime video so like it's, i'm not super excited about keeping the service because that's gonna go away i did really love wednesday shows like you that are kind of getting worse stranger things which is entertaining there's some original programming there that i know that people really like but as far as film selection goes every now and again they'll get some really great classic films but like i'm a huge horror lover their horror selection normally sucks they'll get two or three really amazing films and then the rest of it is just kind of like throwaway which is really disappointing uh, as far as like dramas and indie films i feel like a lot of it's like lower rated stuff that's really not all that interesting and so netflix is really not one of my favorite streaming services honestly like i do have a lot of streaming services but it would be probably bottom of my list as what to pay for if it wasn't for some of the original programming that they offer. Up next is going to be Hulu. Hulu is actually one of my favorite of the major streaming services. I feel like they always have a really great selection of films and they're constantly updating their selection of films where there might be a month or two where you don't get as much great new content, but there's always such a great back catalog of things that have already been there that they've had the rights for, for a really long time. And I'm always appreciative of that with Hulu. I think that, you know, I spend most of my time on Hulu when I watch like newer release films or like films that I've really wanted to see for a while because Hulu does a great job culminating those. And also Hulu has one of the best selections of TV shows of any of the streaming services. I feel like whether it be older shows like King of the Hill or Scrubs or things that have meant a lot to me over the years, they have a really great back catalog of TV shows. They also get a lot of new television shows that people really love that are easy to access. And I just think Hulu is one of the best when it comes to culminating all of that and they're one of the services I would put up near the top as one of my favorites I feel like I spend the most time on there and so like between Netflix and Hulu I'd choose Hulu any day of the week because the material is so much better in my opinion up next is gonna be prime video the <laughs> which obviously you have to have an Amazon Prime membership to have prime video I used to be very uh, a huge advocate for Prime Video as far as like their selection goes and I feel like in the past year or so it's gotten worse. There has been a way worse selection. I feel like every time I get on there to try to see something new or see like oh have they gotten any new indie films or new horror films or new dramas and every time I get on there it's like really shitty films that have really terrible reviews and there's nothing super exciting on Prime Prime video where a couple years ago I'd get on there and be like wow this selection is truly incredible and I'm really surprised that they were able to get 
so much great material on their website or on their streaming service for me this one it's it's hit or miss i feel like i like it more than netflix because i feel like there's enough times that i found movies there's like original films that i really love on there like uh i know they've housed the neon demon the suspiria 2018 remake for a really long time there's a lot of really amazing films they got the northman and licorice pizza and a lot of movies really early that were available on the service that i really love and so every now and again you'll get some really amazing films put on there but i feel like their normal accumulation of movies is is pretty lackluster and so i would say for the three i've said right now prime would fall in between hulu and netflix i think i would be more inclined to go to prime video uh and pick a movie than i would netflix so coming up next this is going to be more of a niche streaming service but the criterion channel this is one of the cha the streaming services i spend the most time on obviously i'm a huge film fanatic so criterion culminates some of the greatest films that have ever released obviously you're looking at a lot more um classic films from like as early as like the 30s all the way up through like the 70s 80s you'll get 90s and 2000s films on there but it's a lot more classic cinema and what they do do a good job of is depending on what month it is like for black history month or women's history month uh when halloween shows up when like you know when you get certain holidays or big big uh big months as far as history is concerned they'll do a lot of culminated playlists with films that like they have either in the criterion collection or ones that they've just acquired the rights to that they think are worth watching and so i really respect criterion for that because they are able to accumulate these really enormous playlists of really incredible pieces of film that i feel like not all streaming services can do and this is like one of the streaming services i spend the most time on it's absolutely amazing i feel like uh, i've been a, one of their like grandfathered in people since before they started I, I was able to be in like the beta testing era when they were starting getting the criterion channel on board and if you're a fan of cinema the like back catalog of the criterion channel is insane it would take you an eternity to watch the entire back catalog most of the collection is on there they will have times where they'll remove films from the collection and re-add them but the the array of movies that are on there is so expansive that it would be damn near impossible to run out of material so this would be up there with hulu as one of the ones that i spend the most time with coming up next is another niche streaming service that i really love though and that's shutter and you guys have heard me talk about shutter half a million times so i won't spend a lot of time with it but this is probably one of my favorite streaming services because i am a horror fanatic they do an amazing job of adding new released horror films from indie directors they put amazing classic pieces on there like things like possession and near dark that were damn near impossible to find that they give people the ability to watch who have been wanting to see it for years and years and years they have amazing tv shows i did a whole video on the boulet brothers dragula which is an amazing show they do great documentary series like horror noir there's an amazing array of films to watch on there it would take you a very long time i still i've had the service since pretty much its inception and i have not made it through every single film that is that exists on their streaming service and there's a lot of on there and they're one that like i would pay for this over virtually that and the criterion channel would be my top two i would pay for because i like the niche variety of films and there's going to be so much quality on both of those streaming services um and so those are the those are two of my favorites with hulu being one of my favorites in the major category coming up next is a streaming service that i've just more recently been exposed to and that's hbo max and i would say hbo max is definitely worth the money there's a lot of great original programming on there there's a lot of great tv shows on there if you're a fan of a24 they have like almost the entire catalog of a24 films on there the expansiveness of the selection of the movies that they have on there is absolutely insane to me it's like a huge catalog obviously like people are like oh it's hbo but they do a really great job culminating 
the quality films and quality TV shows. And obviously, like I said, with their original programming, I just recently started watching Euphoria, which is only available on HBO. Um, I know The Last of Us has been really huge. HBO's done a ton of amazing shows over time. And this is one I would definitely recommend paying for. I think HBO is 100% worth it. I think that they have an amazing selection and I'm really impressed with it. I didn't know what to think of it at first. I didn't know what to expect, but it is 100% worth paying for. Up next is going to be Apple TV+. Plus. I think Apple TV+, Plus has an amazing array of television shows, original programming speaking. I just recently did a video on Ted Lasso. I watched uh, the show about, or Dickinson, about Emily Dickinson. I'm currently watching the show Shrinking. There's a lot of really great original programming on there. Every now and again, you'll get Apple TV Plus original films like uh, Causeway and Coda that are really phenomenal. Um, but I would say their regular selection of films on there is pretty lackluster. That Apple TV would not be the place Place that I would go to to watch movies they would mostly be the place that I would go to to watch TV shows and so I think if you're into their original television programming it would be worth the money but as far as like if you're looking for a place to stream films it's definitely not worth it for streaming films there's not enough on there to justify the price but like if you're into their original programming that would be the reason I would pay for Apple TV plus up next is Peacock I have done a couple of trial service runs on Peacock uh, I paid for it for a couple of months and I would say it's definitely not worth it. There's a couple of TV shows on there that were really good. Every now and again, they'll get one or two movies that are worth your time to watch, but I feel like the catalog as a whole for the movies that they have on there is relatively lackluster. I feel like this is such a stupid streaming service. I didn't really get anything out of it when I had it, and I would put this at the bottom of the barrel. Then really quickly, I just wanted to do a shout out for Tubi, which Tubi is a completely free streaming service that all you have to do is watch advertisements to watch the film and they don't flood you with advertisements. You get like maybe three or four for an entire film and I would 100% say that Tubi is worth it. Their collection on there is absolutely amazing for what they're able to get their hands on as far as um, newer release films, classic films, movies that are impossible to find anywhere else. Somehow Tubi gets a hold of these and it's a streaming service that I find myself on more than anything else and I don't even have to pay for it. And so I would say if you're a film lover and you love movies, just download Tubi. I know you have to watch advertisements, but it's 100% worth it. So do you agree or disagree with my thoughts on these streaming services? Let me know in the comments. I would be interested to hear what your favorite streaming services are or if I missed any of them and you wanted me to talk about them in detail. Obviously there's ones like Paramount Plus and Disney Plus and ones that I didn't mention, but I just wanted to mention a few of the bigger ones that I thought worth talking about. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.